Good morning, friends, and welcome back. So today, well, first off, sorry if I'm clipping a little bit. We're in a bit of a rush. Busy day today. First off, we're gonna go to Grandma's Marathon, get some pictures of the runners, stand around for like five to six hours. Maybe we'll have some street shot opportunities. And number two, we have to go to a bar later and get some show shots in low light. And we're gonna to try to do this all with one lens. And that's with a caveat, because I don't know how well it's gonna perform, and I have to get nice shots today. Although everyone's gonna hate me and I won't have a job. That said, the lens that we're gonna be taking along is a Canon 35 to 350 millimeter. Let's check it out. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All in. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Thirty-two. All right. So after reviewing the footage, I realized that I didn't get any video of me actually holding this lens and presenting it so here it is the canon 35 to 350 millimeter push pull focus they first started making this lens in 1992 and discontinued it in 2004 so it has no real close relatives aside from the canon 28 to 300 millimeter l lens as well now this lens wasn't so hot because there's no stabilization in well the glass itself but since I'm using this with the Sony a7R2, I benefit from IBIS. So it's one good way to revive old Canon glass. Well, that said, let's keep it rolling. So we just finished up at Grandma's Marathon, did all of my errands for the day, submitted the photos. Last on the agenda is to go to a show. This one might be interesting because I believe it's a low light venue. And if that's the case, we might have to use my backup lens, which is the Rokinon F1.4, and I'll have that mounted to my Sony a7S II because I can't get crappy shots because everyone's going to be pissed at me if I do. However, I'm going to try to use the 35 to 350 as much as possible. Might be a little bit tricky if it is low light. We don't know yet. I should have really scoped it out, but I haven't had time. That said, on the way home tomorrow, I'll take the scenic route. We'll try to get some wildlife shots as well because there's a lot of eagles and hawks in town. Sorry if I'm rambling too. I'm a little bit tired. It's been a pretty long day, but we're going to get through this. Stick around. So don't mind my slightly disheveled room. I just want to go over a few things real quick when using this Canon 35 to 350 millimeter lens. One, that last show was a little bit more tricky than it looked. I had to slow the shutter speed down to 1 over 20 to get anything that's mildly usable because, well, not just because it was a dim venue, but we kept getting some weird LED flicker, and the only way I could mitigate that was using a really slow shutter speed, which wasn't honestly that big of a deal because I do have in-body stabilization on my cameras, and it's a fairly dim lens anyways. Now, autofocus is what probably you'd expect from an old 1992 Canon lens. If you have a system with phase detection autofocus, it's going to be astronomically better than a camera with contrast detection autofocus like my A7S II. Or if you're using it with a Canon body, I'm adapting it using a Sigma MC11 adapter to my Sony systems. Picture quality is good enough. I mean... At the end of the day, you're getting a Canon L lens, so it's usable. However, there's going to be some chromatic aberration. But again, this is to be expected from an old lens, and it's nothing you can't fix in post-production. Now, I did take this to one more show. This was an outdoor venue, just to showcase the versatility of the 35 to 350 millimeter range. I think this is a perfect lens for photojournalists, 
And I'm pretty sure this one came from the LA Times. Well, at least it says it. I bought it from eBay, and the guy lives in California. Might be fake news, who knows? I'll let you decide. And on the way home, I actually found a hawk. Didn't find it. It was the same one I used in my old, old first upload on this channel. It's kind of wildlife, diet, diet wildlife, we'll call it. So enough rambling, let's get to the video. All right, so that will do it for the video. I do think it's a great lens, not because of confirmation bias, but because of the range you get and the quality that this can render. Now, I would say if you have a Sony camera with in-body stabilization, I would consider a lens like this because you can find it around 700 bucks and there's no real lens like it. I've used this for a few live shows, events, and even wildlife because it does have the 350 millimeter range. All right, so that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next week.